Hey guys, Ryan with Psycho News, and today we're at the beautiful Blackmore Ranch in Southern California, and today we're meeting with MIPS. MIPS has organized this event uh, with a lot of their industry partners, including Thor, Fox, uh, Alpine Stars, Trolley Designs, and really the, the goal for MIPS is to make helmets safer. They're in the construction world, they're in the obviously the motorcycle world, equestrian riding, all sorts, anything with a helmet, these guys are here uh, to make safer. Uh, a lot of helmet technologies for the past few years have been where it just drops the helmet onto a flat surface. And as riders, we know that that's not always super realistic. A lot of times we hit the ground from an angle and we roll or we slide or there's dirt on the ground or an obstacle in the way and you roll or you bounce off of that thing. And so what the MIPS technology is, is it allows the helmet to kind of rotate on your head uh, while the impact is going on. So let's go inside, meet with some of our, the industry partners and see what's going on. Hello everyone, my name is Max Stramlitz. I am the CEO of MIPS. I flew over from Stockholm only two days ago to host this uh, safety symposium at Blackmore Range. So being able to redirect the energy, that's what we do, that's the basics of what we do, that's what all the different technologies use or do. But what we really also do is that we want to offer, of course, diversification, be the perfect solution in each helmet we are in. And that can sometimes mean that you use the basic MIPS solution, which we call the essential. It has the essential of the MIPS. It has the MIPS performance, but of course, it's integrated on top of the helmet liner and directly put into the helmet. Then we have one of our newer solutions where you have the MIPS technology integrated directly into the liner. That's exactly the same job, but a more integrated solution. In total, we have about 12 different technologies that we use today to fit really the right helmet, but also fit the right purpose. Today MIPS is in nine different type of helmets and of course that requires different technology for different purpose. So talk to me a little bit about, so if you have a helmet that you see, it's a $150 helmet, a, more of a price point helmet, uh, but it has the MIPS logo on it, that yeah. means that that helmet is still going to be just as safe or have the same MIPS technology that a $600, $700 top-of-the-line helmet would? Yeah, all of them pass exactly the same approval test and that's really important for us. The size of the, the wallet shouldn't determine which solution you should have in terms of performance. They all do the same thing. For us it's really important that you can present MIPS in different ways. Maybe a more integrated solution can sometimes be a more costly version, but for us it's really important that all the consumers should have access to MIPS. Nice. And uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the testing that you guys do? So you showed us the presentation earlier. I feel like for a, a number of years the standard has been just dropping the helmet onto a flat surface. What you guys do is really test that on an angled surface because as motorcycle riders, uh, dirt and street, we know that we don't crash on just a hard surface all the time. It's not a direct drop, it's a slide, there's dirt on the ground, there's yeah. obstacles, things like that. Yes, and, and you're right. Like most helmet standards today, they are approving and certifying helmet against a linear impact, so a straight impact to the ground. We know, of course, from a lot of accidents that a lot of the accident is actually not straight. You normally travel with velocity, you fall over the handlebar, you hit the ground with an angle, then a rotational force is introduced. That's not normally what helmets are testing for. You start to see some of the helmet standards that is being introduced today from the regulatory body that they actually have included uh, rotational motion. The first one out was uh, the FIM standard, which is for MotoGP helmets, where they also test for rotation. In Europe, there is now a new standard, 2206, which is also including rotational motion. So the world is starting to test for uh, rotational motion, but at MIPS, we always said that we can't wait for the world. We need to try to educate the world as much as we can do. When standards are implemented, of course, we are super happy. Until then, we just do our job. And that rotational impact is really what you guys focus on. That's, from your data, that's what's the most dangerous, is that rotational mass. Now, it depends a little bit on what type of impact you have, but today, 
and what you also see a lot of hospital statistics and so on. In most accidents today, if you wear a helmet, you are normally protected against a skull fracture. If you see the rate of skull fractures in hospital statistics, that has decreased a lot. And in most cases when you wear a helmet, if you didn't have an, a really high impact, but in a normal impact uh, scenario, you normally avoid a skull fracture. What a lot of helmets are not designed to manage is rotational energy. And that, of course, is what we are focusing on doing. Hey, what's up? I'm Heath with Alpine Stars, and we're here at the MIPS Symposium at Blackmore Ranch. So Alpine Stars uh, began this Supertech M10 motocross helmet back in 2018. Supercross A1 made its debut, and it was five years prior that basically got the helmet to where that was. And now here we are five years later with Supercross and many other outlets of motocross, Dakar, uh, utilizing Alpine Stars SM10 with over 50 supported professional athletes wearing the helmet today. I want to talk about the objectives of the SM10. So overall, we wanted to make the ultimate helmet that enhanced the performance of the athletes. Obviously, that's priority. But it also needed to be comfortable, very lightweight, had adjustability, and ultimately help the riders go beyond maybe what they would have normally done in a standard helmet. We wanted to make something that had incredible airflow to keep the head cool. We wanted to have a visor release, a visor release system. In the event of an impact or crash, this visor can pop off at any angle, mitigating that angular rotation that happens that obviously causes concussions. So today we are featuring the Supertech M10 helmet, but we also have the Supertech M8 helmet, which also features MIPS as a protection technical partner. So what's the difference between SM8, SM10? It's just a little less carbon fiber, that's it. The protective elements of the helmet are exactly the same as far as design, features, um, A-head, which I'll talk about really quickly. Um, the SM8 was just a version that was maybe a little less carbon, so price availability was a little bit lower than what an SM10 would be. Talking about the A-head fitment system that Alpine Stars pioneers this technology, it's an industry exclusive item that Alpine Stars has in the SM10. What is the A-head fitment system? It's basically a 12-point adjustable system that allows the rider to either angle the helmet more down on the helmet, more up on the helmet, tilted forward or tilted back to basically have a rider fine tune how the helmet sits on his or her head. So 12 points of contact, it's three holes on four sides of the helmet that basically the crown connection piece can snap into depending on what those riders needs are. And with MIPS in connection with that, we offer a MIPS two-point system, which we have the MIPS alongside, and we also have the MIPS in the crown. One of the biggest features that we wanted to make sure was a dominant factor in making this helmet is airflow. How do we keep riders' heads as cool as possible? So we have one of the largest import vents on the top of the helmet than any other brand. And also the amount of airflow that comes through the helmet is incredibly looked after through development team, making sure that rider not only has one of the lightest helmets, but also the coolest. So another feature also in the SM8 and SM10 helmet is this relief that's on the side. So this area here that you see in this black rubberized compound, underneath is a soft EPS foam. So what that allows, in the event the rider has a crash, the helmet comes down, you don't have carbon all the way to the bottom here. So you have a softer EPS, which mitigates collarbone damage, collarbone breakage, because this softer foam material, you can even see me pressing on it, it allows more flexibility in the event of a crash and the rider's helmet digs into his collarbone, which is a relatively soft bone that can break very easily. Hi, my name is Jeff David from Troy Lee Designs. Uh, we're here today showcasing uh, our helmets in our collection that use the uh, MIPS components. 
First off here is our SE5. This model comes in a carbon fiber model as well as a composite version. Some of the key elements of this helmet include purpose-built channeling with the intake and exhaust ports for maximum ventilation. It has a three-piece EPS system with multi-densities inside. It has a collarbone relief section of the helmet here as well as the breakaway visor screws. This allows the visor to detach from the helmet uh, in the event of a crash, which helps mitigate those rotational forces. And then most importantly, inside here is the MIPS Integra system. This Integra Fuse system, as it's called, is MIPS slimmest and most streamlined uh, device that they have in their offering. And what this is, is it's a thin, PC sheet that's co-molded to the EPS, which forms a slip layer inside here. And then against that is the comfort liner, which is attached using elastic fasteners, and that allows it to slip against this uh, low friction layer here, which mitigates those rotational forces in the event of a crash. In addition to the uh, SE5 model here, we have the SE4 polyacrylate. So this helmet is designed for the average everyday rider, but it still offers that same safety elements um, and features that you see on a lot of the SE5 helmets. First and foremost, it has the breakaway visor screws that you see on the SE5. It has an EPP chin bar liner internally here. This helmet here on the SE4, this uses the MIPS C solution, which is a low friction layer that's suspended inside the helmet using elastomers. That allows a 10 to 15 millimeter rotation in all angles. So again, helping uh, mitigate against those angular forces that a rider might um, get when he, when he crashes. So in addition to safety being a huge priority for our Troy Lee brand and specifically for our helmets, obviously we're also known for our style and graphics. So we're always trying to push the envelope. You know, Troy's career of painting helmets, which he still does to this day, translates into a lot of the production helmets that you see. This graphic right here was actually taken from an old school Bradshaw helmet. Some of the elements here, and then we incorporated some new elements to make it more of a, a modern feel, a little bit of a twist. We're always using unique colors. A lot of the colors that we use on our production helmets actually aren't regular Pantone colors. They're custom made in our paint shop, which we still have to this day. And we send those to the factory and they replicate those colors. So that's where you'll see the difference of the graphic story that you see on the helmets versus the competition when you see them on the shelf. And then of course in the stadiums or on the track when the, ride, when the riders are wearing them, they look fast. Whether it's the, the graphics or just the styling of the helmet. And speaking of MIPS in particular, not only do we have them on our moto helmets here, but we really have it across almost our whole range of helmets. We have a whole um, host of bicycle helmets, mountain bike helmets in particular, uh, that use the MIPS uh, components. Pretty much now every day, I mean, pretty much everyone nowadays rides some sort of bicycle or mountain bike, they do training, what have you. So we've realized the importance of safety and how important the MIPS device is, so we've incorporated those devices into our full range of helmets. Hey, what's up? Sean Ryan. Uh, I'm with Fox Racing. I'm the director of Power Sports category. Uh, we're here at a MIPS, MIPS event uh, showcasing all of our helmets, but really talking about some new options that we're bringing in the fall. But I'll start with the V1 that's behind me. We just launched this um, earlier, fall 22. Uh, but yeah, this is a brand new helmet to the market for us, replacing our old V1. It hits the ECE 2206 standard, which is a new uh, European standard that really has set a new benchmark for safety and helmets. It includes uh, higher speed impact uh, mitigation and then also rotational impact management. So a new standard, 
We're hitting the new standard. We're lighter weight. We have a new head form, a universal head form that will live across all of our helmets. So if you're, if you're large in one of our helmets, you'll be a large in the other helmet as well. Um, and then I've got Andrew here, our lead engineer on helmets, who can talk to you about some awesome new stuff that we're working on. Yeah, so I'm Andrew Fialo. I'm the lead engineer for Moto Helmets. And so we have here our new V3 RS at this MIPS event. And uh, we're bringing first to market solution MIPS D2 split, which we have a cutaway here. So I can show you that. So this is that D2 split. Uh, the way this works is we have two layers of EPS, an inner layer along the head form and an outer layer. So the inner layer uh, is meant to absorb low impact speeds, the outer to deal with those high impact speeds. Um, this solution is unique in that it's an offset of the head form that we use, our all new head form. So the same head form that's used in V1, V3, V3 RS. Um, this D2 split is an offset of that head form. And what that allows us to do is keep the helmet slim. So the overall profile of the helmet has gotten more narrow. So I can show you one that's not cut up. This guy here, beautiful. Um, so again, because this is an offset of the head form, the, the overall profile, the silhouette can remain more narrow, which means that we're able to bring the weight down from our current V3 RS while still having the same fit across the line. So this is a this is a full carbon carbon fiber helmet um, outer layer, right? Correct. So we've got and then go through, run through some of the venting, some of the text, some of the features there. Yeah, so we'll run through some of the features. So it's like Sean said, a chopped uh, carbon outer layer, the shell. We have vents on the top of the helmet, four up there, adjustable visor with three positions, a high, medium, and low. We have a pass-through system for our visor for those large impacts, get the helmet, get the visor away so the helmet can move more freely. Uh, we have two-tone mouth mesh here, it's unique, something that we haven't seen that we were able to push ourselves to do. Uh, on the inside, we have speaker recesses for comm systems, so this is universal. You can use it with Cardo, Santa, any system you have. We have an antimicrobial liner with a cooling agent to help keep you cool as you ride and sweat and perform in this. The helmet comes with a ton of accessories. For the price, it's insane. Um, so this helmet, I don't know if you can see this. So the helmet comes with a spare visor, a visor extension, just a clip-on design. I'll show you that real quick. Goes on nice and easy. Gives you some extra length, tinted, to help with those sunny days. Um, it comes with a spare headliner. It comes with spare cheek pads, thin and thick, so you can dial that fit exactly as you need it to fit for your head. And then we have this new accessory. This is a mud visor that replaces this visor. So you pull this off, put this accessory on, and uh, it also comes with mud foam. So when you're racing in those muddy conditions and your visor's getting caked up, you would put this on and uh, when you come back in, you can pull the foam off, put a fresh layer down, and get going. So this actually came from our athletes as a request um, to remove all these open vents on this visor where the cake could collect and make it smoother so the mud doesn't have a chance to gather and weigh down your helmet and create strain on your neck. So that's all included in the box along with spare hardware and an all new bag. Um, again, for the price, it's insane. So we're here showcasing this at a MIPS event. Um, you know, Fox, we're really taking a stand. Uh, state commitment to safety and protection is a pillar of our brand. We're going to have MIPS across every helmet that we make, whether it's motocross or bicycle helmets, from a, a skate le or like a dirt jump $49 youth helmet all the way up to this new V3RS. Every helmet has one form or another of MIPS in it. And then again, like the, the new standard that we're hitting with all these helmets, ECE 2206, a new standard in safety, but we've also been able to reduce the weight on all these helmets. So still finalizing production weights on the V3RS and the V3. The V1 that we just launched is 15% lighter than, than the existing helmet that we had. So lighter, safer, safer um, and then more comfortable fit for a broader range of head sizes.